Well, hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, tonight, we're gonna be continuing working on this Alice 175 diesel. Uh, you guys been watching this, this is gonna be part three on that. Um, so if that's something you're interested in seeing, stick around, it's coming up. All right, so our next step is gonna be replacing uh, the hydraulic filter. Uh, I've checked my fluid, it's a little low. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just spin the filter off here, see what the oil looks like, and then um, if need be, we may just go ahead and drop all the hydraulic fluid out of it and put new in it. So let's slide up here. I'll get my filter wrench in place and then we'll see what we've got. All right, I don't know if you can see that, but that fluid does not look good. It's real watery, and it looks like it's had water in it. So, just seeing that, I'm gonna go ahead and drain all of the fluid out of this, and uh, we'll put new in it. Now, there's always one thing that's bugged me um, in the past whenever I've done work to hydraulic systems is we can change that filter and we can drain it and we can fill the reservoir back up and, and start the tractor and let it cycle through. But the problem is, is we're gonna have a, this fluid in all the lines. Um, so what I like to do is uh, take a piece of hydraulic line that I've got a fitting made up for the remote. Um, we'll, we'll do just what I said, but then I'm gonna go ahead and take a, a a remote and I'm going to push fluid out of it. Um, for one, that's going to get what fluid would be between the valve stack and the remote out. So I'll, I'll replenish that, uh, but then it's going to allow any other fluid that has water contaminant in it uh, kind of move through the system and hopefully we can get most of that out. I may even have to drop the fluid out of this thing twice. We'll just kind of look at it and see um, you know what that fluid looks like once we replace it and we get a new filter on there um, Last thing you want to do is halfway do this job because it's so critical um, For all the functions of the tractor, so we want to make sure that we've got good good fluid uh, good filters and uh, That'll allow that pump to last much longer as well as the uh, tractor in general. So at this point we're going to Probably need to empty my bucket down here and we're gonna slide up underneath the machine And there's a couple of drain plugs down there. We want to make sure we get the right one The one uh, all the way to the back is going to be for the transmission and rear end uh, reservoirs and Then the one towards the front is going to be for the hydraulic piece and also encapsulates our power director that's inside this uh, torque tube so this is where we check it and this is the split that i'm referring to but the way the casting is the wall is actually right up here between uh, rear end and hydraulic so a lot of guys will run the same fluid up here as they run there i don't know what this tractor has in it so um i'm not gonna probably drain actually i know i'm not gonna drain out the back half because i've already checked it it looks fine levels are good um so i'm not gonna worry about that so with that in mind, um, probably <coughs> probably gonna flip over to the time-lapse camera, um, drain this fluid out, and then we'll go ahead and put new fluid in it and change this filter as well. And I thought I would mention too, I'm using Wix uh, 51452 is gonna be our new uh, Wix filter. So if you're curious what that is, now you know. This one here has the uh, plug right there. It's an inch and an eighth. So I'm gonna go ahead and just talk, knock this thing off of here. And then we'll get this fluid of draining. And let's see what we got. All right, we're just about there. There we go. That looks awful. Some of the worst, 
worst float I've seen yet. And there's not much in there. <laughs> we should have several gallon, and I'll bet you I don't have a gallon in that bucket. We need to check the uh, specs to see how much we're supposed to have. As you can see, there's not much in there. And the gurgling you heard a second ago, I've left my filter off. I'll put a new one back on here in just a minute. All right, we're just gonna let that drain out and then uh, slide our new filter on, put our new fluid in it. And then we'll go back there and I'll show you the process on those remotes. All right, another thing I like to do is leave the actual drain plug off and then I'll go ahead and put some new fluid in and then I'll flush out whatever old fluid is left in there that was not able to drain. So I've been watching that and it turned from the milky uh, color that has the water in it to the clean fluid. So I just want to mention that and we'll continue filling this up. I'll put my drain plug in and we'll get it filled up. All right, so I dropped the uh, hydraulic oil out and I cleaned off the uh, filler right there. And then I also like to fill up that hydraulic filter with fluid so that when I put it on there, I don't have that air lock. Still going to get a little bit of air in the system, but uh, a lot less if you've already got that thing filled up. <clears throat> Not all applications will allow you to do that. But anyway, got that done and then got the uh, fluids topped off there inside that uh, hydraulic reservoir, as you can see here. And I just keep checking it until we get it up to the level that I'm all right, so I got the fluid in it, got my filter changed. I'm gonna go ahead and fire this beast up and uh, let some of that fluid just circulate through there and make sure we're good. And then once that's done, we're gonna flip around to the back side there and I'll go over the remotes. Uh, one thing we're gonna do is also check the pressure. I'm gonna show you how to check the pressure on the system here. Uh, pretty easy, uh, nothing too fancy. You don't have to have any kind of test set or anything like that. But if you're uh, getting ready to go check a tractor out, maybe to purchase or something, this is a nice little tool to have with you so you can figure out whether the hydraulic pump is working as it should. So let me uh, hop up there. We're gonna fire this thing up, make sure that we don't have any leaks. was just uh, twist my steering back and forth, move some fluid around, lifted and lowered the three point hitch a few times there uh, just to cycle the fluid. And I also was kind of watching around my new filter here just to make sure we don't have anything leaking on that. Everything looks fine with it. All right, we're gonna slide around here to the back side. Really, you need two people to do this. Um, I'm gonna try to do it with the camera being my second person. So hopefully everything will turn out okay. All right, so we're gonna grab one of the remotes here and hopefully I'll get the correct one in the beginning. Let's see here. I think it's gonna be the right. It's gonna be output. So what I did was I bought a 5,000 PSI gauge that is oil filled. And then I converted it over to a quick coupler here for the remote. Nothing fancy like I mentioned. And we're just gonna go ahead and plug that thing in here. Oh, okay. I hadn't used that before, there we go. So that is a nice little helper right there. All right, so we got that plugged into the remote. Got that set up, now I'm just simply gonna hop up there, fire the tractor up. I should be able to see my gauge, and I'm just gonna go hit that remote, and we're gonna look at our pressure. I believe we should be around, it should be over 3,000 PSI. So let's see where we're at. All right, so we got a little over 2,000 there at one point. Um, we'll need to check the book on that to kind of see where we're at, 
but it looks like we're probably fine. I don't see any issues with that. Now, if we were down, you know, 1,500 or 1,000 or something like that, then we could uh, say that we've got a pump that's getting weak for sure. So anyway, uh, that's that for the pressure check. Let me uh, kind of go over what I'm gonna do here for uh, the fluid kind of flush. And what I do is, it's got a spare piece of uh, hose, open on one end, coupler on the other. We're gonna plug that into the remote. I'm gonna pick another remote this time just so that we can use the other ones. All right, I'm gonna put that down into my bucket. And let's see here, probably put it, I got fluid in that. Put it over here to the side. I wanna be able to hold that hose. I don't wanna leave it like that and then go up there and hit the, hit the remote. Because we're probably gonna end up with it blowing out of the bucket. So let me get set up here. I'm gonna fire that tractor up, hop off, and then see if I can't uh, reach up there from the side and do what I need to do. I guess if I had a longer hose, I could take it on up around there. Let's see here. That's gonna be difficult to get to. All right, so I got set up here on my fuel tank. I think that's gonna work out fine. You should be able to see. I just have to be real careful here. All right, so I put about probably two gallon roughly in there. And I still had that milky looking uh, fluid that we saw that we drained out of there. So what I'm gonna do next is leave this alone. I'm gonna come back down here and I'm gonna refill the reservoir uh, with a couple of gallon or so, get us back up where we need to be. And then I'm gonna do the same thing again and basically all I'm doing is just flushing out that old fluid that's in there and getting it out of the system the best that I can. There's still gonna be some left in, it's about impossible to get all of it, but that's a, uh, a way that you can do that. So I'm not gonna bore you with all that. I'm gonna go ahead through that process here. It may take me a bit and get that done and uh, then we'll be squared away with the hydraulics. All right, so I tried to get some good video of me uh, you know, running the remote there and clearing out that fluid that was um, kind of milky, uh, but I didn't get good footage on that. So in the middle of that, I had another issue that popped up on me and that was um, the point of, I didn't have any more fluid left to drain. And I only pulled out maybe a gallon and a half to two gallons through that uh, remote port. So <clears throat> that got me thinking about, uh, maybe having some kind of obstruction. When I checked the fluid level where we had filled it earlier, right here, that fluid level had not changed. So when we're looking at the torque tube, inside this cavity is your high-low clutch pack. And then you got your input shaft that runs through here. I'm sure there's some other gearing as well. And then right here at this point, you've got a a gasket, a screen, another gasket, and then you get into this uh, lower suction area for your uh, pump, your hydraulic pump. Um, there's another drain here. So I went ahead and pulled that drain open and it drained out fluid, but it was the nasty milky fluid like we saw before. And it only pulled out of there maybe a gallon, if that. When that happened, the fluid level up there still did not change. So, upon further inspection and questions that I asked some other uh, guys, that screen could become so plugged that it would not let the fluid pass through it from this reservoir up here. So what my next step is, I'm actually going to separate this bottom uh, pickup uh, for the pump. I'm gonna take it off and we're gonna check that uh, screen out. Um, I anticipate that thing's gonna be fully plugged and that's gonna be the problem. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do next, uh, a step that I really wasn't planning on having to do, but kinda is what it is. We gotta make this thing right. Um, 
and make sure that we don't starve that pump for fluid or put nasty fluid through it and uh, end up burning the pump up. So anyway, that's what I'm gonna do next. Uh, there's, I don't know how many of the bolts there are, maybe 12 or so up here on the belly, up underneath there. We're just gonna go around, knock those off. I've already drained the fluid that I had put in it out so that I don't get a surprise uh, when everything comes loose. And uh, we're just gonna set it down and see what it looks like. So let's flip over to the time-lapse camera there and we'll work through that piece of it. All right, get them glued on. Let me take this whole thing over here to the table. Looks nice and clean, which is good. So around that shaft, there should be a bearing. And that I'm gonna say is where the fluid comes through. All right, so Let's slide over here. Here is the pickup. There's the screen. There's lots of little those like rubber pieces there. Well, I can't tell is how clear that screen is. I mean, it doesn't look bad, just to be honest. So, let me get situated here and we'll separate that screen and see what it looks like. All right, I'm gonna grab my shop back and I'm gonna clean up that uh, screen right there. So I can see down through this screen. There's just not a problem with this. All right, so I got my new parts uh, shipment in and I got the two new gaskets that I need here for this hydraulic uh, sump pickup. Uh, we got the screen right here. The screen is no longer available. Uh, so I'm gonna have to reuse this one. It's kind of peeled up there just a little bit, but uh, I don't think that's gonna be that big of a deal. So I didn't get any video of this, but I went around, there's two gaskets, one on this surface, then your screen will go on, and then one on top, and then that's what'll bolt up uh, to the bottom of the tractor. So I got my two new gaskets right here, and uh, as you can see, I'll just fit right on there. So what I'm gonna do first, like I said, this is already cleaned up. I'm just gonna go ahead and run the uh, Little bit of my Permatex around through here. Real thin layer. Just enough kind of holding in place. Keep everything sealed up good. Take my gasket. And by the way, that part number is 702-33-249. Just gonna move it around on there. Kind of serving a dual purpose putting that permatex on there it's going to hold me in place and offer a little bit of seal put another thin layer here i 
I don't want to gobble this, just enough to kind of give us a little bit of a additional seal. Now make sure you're going on the inside edges of where your bolt holes are. The outside's not going to do you any good. All right, we're going to go ahead and reinstall the screen, and the screen portion goes up. It's got this little cross member in here, and that part goes down. We'll set that on there. Move him around a little bit. One more layer on our screen body here. Take our next gasket, get it moved in place, kind of mush him around a little bit so that it's dispersing that permatex. And then last, we're gonna put another quick round of our permatex here. And this will be the portion that will bolt up to the bottom of our uh, tractor. All right. All that looks good. Uh, we're gonna slide over here to the belly and uh, I've already got the bottom surface cleaned up. We're gonna use our floor jack. We're gonna hold this uh, up into place and then I'll put those uh, bolts in there and she'll be secured. Oh, one quick thing I wanted to mention is this drain plug right here did not have the plastic seal on it. So I got a new one of those. Just goes over it like so. put it back in place and I'll tighten all that down here after a while. All right, let's slide over to the tractor and we'll reinstall the housing. All right, so we're looking up underneath uh, the tractor here at the pickup and I actually uh, still have the gasket on there. And so we'll go ahead and knock all of that gasket material off. I've got a little gasket remover, that tool right here. I'll we'll use that. All right, so we're over here to the, <clears throat> to the sump. We wanna go ahead and get that reinstalled. It's got a rubber hose here. And a hose clamp. And get that torque back down so we're good there. And now at this point, I need to go ahead and tighten up my drain right here and just had that on their finger tied earlier. So let me get that thing tightened up next. All right, so that drain plug is an inch and an eighth. And I just pulled it out there and took it over there to the tool box so I could get the right size. All right, I got that reinstalled. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let this set overnight before I fill it uh, full of fluid. So we've got one more uh, bolt right here too that I need to tighten down. So get my wrench, get that thing done, and then we'll uh, come back here tomorrow and we will fill it up. 
All right, so I got the hydraulics uh, all filled up and found out that there's actually a small pump that uh, feeds fluid into the power director that's inside that uh, part of the torque tube. And that pump also supplies hydraulic fluid over and down into uh, the, the sump pickup that we've been working on that had the screen in it. Um, so I filled my reservoir up, I started the tractor, it pumped some fluid over, my fluid level went down, and I refilled. I had to do that a couple of times, and then uh, that got my hydraulic reservoir filled up, and that allowed me to get everything back and working properly. So that's going to conclude the video of this uh, part three for the hydraulic system maintenance. Um, part four, five, and six will be coming up here shortly so appreciate you watching hit like subscribe share the video and stick around there's lots more coming up